Hello, everyone. Um, today, we will continue our discussion on uh, phase equilibria, which is on thermodynamic aspects of phase transitions. At the end of this lecture, the students should be able to um, understand the, the temperature dependence of phase stability and um, determine the location and slopes of phase boundaries. Now, from Clausius inequality, recall that um, criterion for uh, spontaneity in equilibrium is the entropy for spontaneous process in isolated systems. Entropy of the universe is increasing until it reaches the maximum. And then once it reaches the maximum, delta S of the universe becomes zero. So this means this is in equilibrium. And then for a non-spontaneous process, delta S of the universe is less than zero. So the use of entropy as criterion for spontaneity can only be applied to um, isolated systems. But in most cases, uh, we are dealing with non-isolated process. So for spontaneous process in non-isolated systems at constant temperature and pressure, we are considering the Gibbs free energy. So for spontaneous process, Gibbs free energy decreases until it reaches the minimum value. So delta G becomes uh, zero or equal to zero at equilibrium. And for non-spontaneous process, delta G is increasing or greater than zero. Now, recall um, Clausius inequality in terms of Gibbs free energy. So we are considering closed system, fixed number of moles, and then the PV work only. So the R equation is TG plus STT minus BDP is less than or equal to zero. Now, if we have constant temperature and constant pressure, so our equation becomes TG at constant P and T is less than or equal to zero. So in converting this equation, dg plus sdt minus vdp is equal to zero. So therefore, our equation becomes dg is equal to negative um, sdt plus uh, vdp. Now, uh, more on gives uh, energy, let's talk about the dependent variables. So we are talking uh, in the previous discussions, uh, constant temperature and pressure. But now we will be considering the number of moles. So our equation becomes dg is equal to partial g over partial uh, pdp at constant t and n partial g plus partial g uh, over partial t dt at constant P and N, and then plus partial G over partial N D N at constant P and T. So the total differential uh, equation is uh, DG minus SDT plus, PD plus VDP. Now what about the last term? So if we will combine the DG equations, so you know that the partial G over partial P is equivalent to volume. And then partial G over partial T at constant pressure is equal to negative entropy. Now, what about partial G over partial N? So, for uh, we will now be considering the mu or the chemical potential. So, take note that um, for one component system, the molar gives uh, free energy and the chemical potential are equal. Now, to appreciate more of um, chemical potential, let us review first the types of equilibrium. So from the previous discussion, we have mechanical equilibrium. So uh, um, initially, pressure of the system is greater than external pressure until P of system becomes equal with the external pressure. So thus, mechanical equilibrium is achieved. Now, we also have thermal equilibrium. So, example, if the temperature of the system is greater than the temperature of the surroundings, and then the heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature, so there is heat flow until temperature of the system is equal to temperature of the surroundings. So, thus, we are achieving thermal equilibrium. Now, we also have what we call the thermodynamic equilibrium or the material equilibrium. So, matter 
tends to flow from higher potential to lower potential until it becomes equal. Now, we will be applying the thermodynamic um, equilibrium in concepts like diffusion. So diffusion is in terms of difference of concentration gradient, phase changes that uh, what we will be discussing right now and in the latter part of the course is all about chemical reactions. Now let us continue um, discussing the chemical potential of your substance. Now, Gibbs free energy is directly proportional with the number of moles. So G is equal to partial G over partial N at constant P and T. Now, you know that this is equal to uh, chemical potential multiplied by N. So our equation in terms of molar Gibbs free energy G over N or G sub M is e equivalent to chemical um, potential. Now, let us uh, review the phase diagram for water. So the phase equilibrium of a system is summarized in a phase diagram. So this tells us the variation of uh, phase stability and phase transitions at varying P and T conditions. Now, let us consider this region. In the solid um, area, um, area here, at any point, P and T within this region, the most stable um, phase is solid. So why isn't the gas or liquid phase stable here? Because any gas or any liquid at these conditions will spontaneously transform into solid. So at the conditions of the boundary lines, so we have phase transition that is happening. So wherein two phases are stable at equilibrium. So this one is the boundary between solid and liquid, and this boundary is uh, between liquid and uh, vapor. So why does phase equilibrium um, occur or happening at these conditions? The key idea here is because they have equal potential. So mu of solid is equal to mu of liquid at this region. And then if we are uh, considering the liquid uh, vapor, mu of liquid here is equal to mu of vapor at a uh, given P and T. So what makes a phase um, stable at a given condition? So take note that uh, the phase that has lower, the lowest chemical potential is the most um, stable. Now, um, if two phases of a single substance are in equilibrium with one another, the, so we could say that the chemical potentials of that substance in the two phases are equal. So at equilibrium, take note that um, the chemical potential of a substance is the same throughout the sample, regardless of how many phases are present in a given sample. So this is the criterion, the criterion for uh, phase equilibrium. So also, in addition, recall that for spontaneous changes, Gibbs uh, free energy decreases so that the phase with the lower Gibbs uh, energy is favored. And this is also related with chemical potential. So also at equilibrium, take note that delta G is equal to zero. So this means that chemical potentials of the two phases are all equal. Now, how about if we have um, non-equilibrium uh, conditions. So if two phases of a single substance are not in equilibrium with one another, then matter will form from phase uh, that, um, that has higher chemical potential to lower chemical potential. So with this, we are minimizing the Gibbs uh, free energy. Now, on phase stability, when a solid is heated at constant pressure, it is converted into a liquid. Then liquid is transformed into a gas. So the favored direction of phase changes can be understood by considering the chemical potential or the molar um, gives uh, free energy of various phases. 
Now, um, the phase with the lowest chemical potential will be dependent on uh, temperature and pressure. So, um, the temperature dependence of the Gibbs energy is expressed in terms of entropy of the system. So with our equation, dg is equal to minus SDT plus VDP. So example, uh, pressure would be constant. And if we will be considering variation of chemical potential at constant P, so this will be canceled. So partial G over partial T at constant P is equal to negative s. So therefore, we could say that in terms of chemical potential, partial mu over partial t at constant p is equal to the negative molar entropy. So the effect of uh, p and t on the chemical potentials of phases and equilibrium is determined by molar entropy. Take note, molar entropy and molar volume respectively. So um, considering um, vary, varying temperature, uh, keeping the pressure constant, this is equal to negative entropy. So what this relation um, tells us, so this relation shows that as temperature is raised or increased, the chemical potential of a pure substance decreases. So the, the slope of plot of mu, mu versus T, is equal to negative S. Since the molar entropy is greater than zero for all, um, substances. Now, um, the schematic temperature dependence of the chemical potential of solid and liquid and gas phases are shown here. So as I mentioned, the phase with the lowest chemical potential at a specified temperature is the most stable at that temperature. So this is the um, line for solid phase, this is the line for liquid phase, and this is the line for vapor. So take note that um, the gas has the steepest line here or the curve if we will uh, considering the curve because this is, uh, this has the highest entropy. Now, the liquid here and then the uh, solid since the, the difference in terms of entropy is uh, much smaller. Now, let us consider here um, melting temperature T sub F or T sub M uh, and fusion or melting and T sub B um, boiling. So below melting point, so which is, which phase is the most stable. So of course, um, the, the chemical potential of solid is the least, so therefore, least value, so therefore solid is the most stable. Uh, at melting temperature or fusion, T fusion, so mu of solid is equal with mu of liquid in equilibrium, but they are both less than mu of gas. Now, at higher temperature, higher than melting, but below the boiling point. So the, the liquid here, the liquid phase is the most stable. Now, if we'll, we'll be considering the boiling temperature, mu of liquid here, the chemical potential of liquid is equal to the chemical potential of gas because they coexist at equilibrium, but they are both less than mu of solid. So take note that this, in this case, we are considering P uh, at, uh, is equal to one atmosphere or constant pressure. So in terms of entropy here, again, I repeat, uh, molar entropy of gas is much higher compared with liquid and compared with solid. Now let us try to solve the first problem. The standard molar entropy of liquid water at zero degrees Celsius is 65 joules per mole Kelvin, and that of ice at the same temperature is 43 joule per mole Kelvin. So what is the effect of increasing the temperature by um, two Kelvin? So from our first equation, uh, d mu over um, dt is equal to negative entropy. So thus, if we're considering delta mu, so this is equal to negative molar entropy times delta T. 
So substituting negative 65 joule per mole Kelvin times 2 Kelvin, we have negative 130 joule per um, mole. And then mu of ice is negative 43 times 2, negative 86 joule per mole. So if uh, take note that uh, if we increase the temperature by 2 Kelvin, so what happens is the molar, the chemical potential is twice the molar um, entropy. Now, what about the response of melting to um, applied pressure? So most um, substances melt at a higher temperature uh, when subjected to pressure. Um, exception of this is water because um, the liquid is denser than the solid phase for water. So the variation of the chemical potential with pressure is expressed by partial mu over partial P at constant T is equal to molar volume. So this equation shows that the slope of a plot of the chemical potential when plot against pressure is equal to the molar um, volume of the substance. So let us um, try to solve the second problem. Um, calculate the effect on the chemical potentials of ice and water of increasing uh, the pressure from 1 to 2 bar at 0 degrees Celsius. The density of ice is 0.917 gram per cubic centimeter, and that of liquid is 0.999 gram per cubic centimeter under these conditions. Now, um, from the equation, uh, delta mu um, is equal to the molar volume times delta P. So in this uh, problem, uh, we are considering the how we arrive with this one. So this is equivalent to um, um, the molar uh, mass of water, but converted to kilogram per mole. So multiplied by uh, change in pressure. So two minus one bar, but converted to Pascal is one times 10 raised to five Pascal. So divided by the density of um, ice, so converted to kilogram per cubic uh, meter, 970. So we will be getting positive 1.97 joule per mole. Now for a liquid phase or liquid um, water, so the molar mass in kilogram per mole times a change in pressure over the density. So we would be getting positive um, 1.8 um, joule per mole. Now let us uh, proceed with the effect on the vapor pressure of a liquid subjected to pressure. So take note that when pressure is applied to a condensed phase, as uh, vapor pressure rises or increases, in effect, uh, molecules are squeezed out of phase and, ex and escape as a gas. So pressure here can be applied on the condensed phase mechanically or by subjecting it to the applied pressure of an inert gas. So to consider the effect on the vapor pressure of a liquid when subjected to a pressure, P is equal to P, so this is the vapor pressure of liquid, P asterisk E raised to molar volume of liquid multiplied by delta P, over RT. So uh, where uh, P asterisk is the vapor pressure of the liquid. And this equation shows that how um, vapor pressure increases when the pressure um, acting on the condensed phase is increased. So in the latter case, the vapor pressure is the partial pressure of the vapor in equilibrium with the condensed phase. Now let us uh, try to solve the next problem. Calculate the effect of an increase in pressure of 100 bar on the vapor pressure of benzene at temperature 25 degrees Celsius, which has density of 0.879 gram per cubic centimeter. Now we will be considering the equation given. P is equal to P um, asterisk or vapor pressure of the liquid, E raised to molar volume delta P over RT. So let us uh, try to solve this term first. Uh, molar volume of the liquid is equal to the molar mass multiplied by density. Then I convert it to SI units. 
and then 100 bar to Pascal over R, 8.31 for joules per mole Kelvin, multiplied by 298 Kelvin. So the answer here is equivalent to 0 0.3306. So substituting E raised to the answer, we would be getting 1.391. Uh, 391. So it means that there is a 40 um, increase, 40 increase when um, uh, the, uh, when pressure of 100 bar is uh, um, applied to benzene. Now let us consider the Gibbs free energy in phase uh, equilibrium. So the precise locations of the phase boundaries, so meaning this is the pressure temperature at which two phases can coexist. So as I mentioned earlier, when two phases are in equilibrium, their chemical potentials are equal. So mu of alpha, let's say one phase is equal to mu beta at the same uh, P and T um, conditions. Now, if we will be considering the slopes of phase boundary, so let's say alpha is equivalent to beta. Mu, uh, mu of alpha is equal to mu of beta. So d mu of alpha is equal to d, d mu of beta. So potential is equivalent to negative SDT plus BDP. But since we are talking of potential, we would be considering molar entropy dP plus molar volume uh, dP is equal to negative SMDT plus BMDP for be, uh, beta. Now combining the molar entropy DT and then the molar volume um, DP, so rearranging. So we have delta S transition multiplied by DT is equal to delta V transition DP. Now if we will be rearranging this DP, our equation becomes DP over DT is equal to delta S over delta V. So take note that this is what we call the Clapeyron equation. The Cla Clapeyron equation is an exact expression for the slope of the tangent to the boundary at any point and applies to any phase equilibria of any pure substance. So one practical approach of the Clapeyron equation is to predict the response of freezing and boiling points when pressure is, pressure is applied. So let us try to apply the Clapeyron equation to solve this problem. The standard volume and entropy of transition of water from liquid to vapor are positive 30 cubic decimeter per mole and positive 109 joule per mole Kelvin respectively at 100 um, degrees Celsius. By how much does the boiling temperature change when pressure is reduced from one to 0.8 bar. So our equation is, so I uh, rearranged this in terms of dt over dp. dt over dp is equal to negative, um, um, is equal to positive delta v over positive delta s transition. Now let us try to substitute the molar volume 30 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic, I converted this to cubic meter per mole. So divided by 109 joule per mole Kelvin. So we will be getting the ratio of dt over dp as 2.752 times 10 to the negative 4 Kelvin per Pascal. So if we will, if we will be multiplying this with a change in pressure, converting it to Pascal for it to be canceled, we would be getting the delta T in Kelvin equivalent to negative um, 5.5. So for the solid liquid boundary, so from the Clapeyron equation, dP over dT is equal to delta S over delta V. But you know that um, delta S is equal to delta H over T. So if we will be substituting, the equation becomes dP over dT is equal to delta H over T multiplied by delta V. So if we will be um, rearranging the equation in terms of the equation of the line, uh, the change in pressure here dP is equivalent to P2 is equal to P1. Now this is our slope here, delta H over T, delta V, and this is our X, so T2 minus 
um, T1. Now, for transition between condensed phases, so meaning solid and liquid co uh, phases coexist, so we will be combining uh, dp, so the integral of dp from p1 to p2. And then we will be considering delta h over delta v since these two phases are in equilibrium and then integral of dt over t. So thus our equation becomes p2 minus p1 is equal to delta h over delta v ln t sub 2 over um, t sub 1. So uh, let us consider the next problem. The enthalpy of fusion of benzene is 10.59 kJ per mole at its melting point of 279 Kelvin and its volume of fusion is close to positive 0.5 cubic centimeter per mole. So what's the equation of its solid liquid phase boundary? So the equation is equal to um, um, standard P, um, one bar plus the... Um, equivalent of um, delta H, 10.59. So I converted it to joule per mole times 10 raised to 3 over um, T um, uh, multiplied by uh, molar volume and then converted it to cubic meter per mole. Then multiplied by T minus, in, in other books, it's T minus T asterisk or T2 minus T1. So the equation becomes P is equal to 1 plus 760 T sub 2 minus T sub 1. Or in some books, it's T minus T um, asterisk. So that is uh, how we use the Clapeyron equation in terms of the solid liquid boundary. Now, what about if we have the liquid vapor uh, boundary. We will be considering vapor as a perfect gas. So from the Clapeyron equation dp over dt is equal to delta H um, all over T <clears throat> times delta V. So the molar volume of a gas is much greater than molar volume of the liquid. So the delta V here is equivalent to molar volume of the gas since this is much, much greater compared to liquid. And in terms of ideal gas equation, this is equal to RT over P. So substituting dP over dT. So the delta V here is in terms of RT over P. So the equation becomes P delta H over RT squared. Now rearranging we will be having dL and P over dT is equivalent to delta H over RT squared. So for liquid vapor boundary, we will be using what we call the clausius clapeyron equation. So clausius clapeyron equation is important for understanding the appearance of phase diagrams, in particular, the location and shapes of liquid vapor, and solid vapor phase boundaries. So it let us um, predict how vapor pressure varies with temperature and how the boiling point varies with pressure. Now for um, solid vapor boundary, uh, this is similar with um, the equations earlier, but take note that delta H of sublimation is the sum of delta H of fusion plus delta H of vaporization. So the only difference between this case and the last is the, the, the replacement of enthalpy of vaporization to sublimation. And the equation predicts a steeper slope for the sublimation curve than for the vaporization curve at similar, similar temperatures. So with that, um, if you are ready, so you may answer the self-assessment questions on um, number three.